He is here in Atlanta, our head football coach, Arthur Smith. Coach Art, congratulations on the dub on Sunday. Uh, we are certainly going to look ahead to Green Bay because that's what it's about. Turn the page, guys, but we got to enjoy a little bit and talk to Coach. Um, the defense, I think, was you know a big storyline, right? Ten points. You hold any team to ten points in the right. NFL. Sure. And, Art, we had talked to you about this all offseason, like, what's this defense going to look like? What are we going to do? I know it's one week, but I was – Thoroughly surprised. I was I was happy with the way the defense responded uh, Sunday against Carolina. Yeah, I mean that was the you know that's the thing strategy wise when we were building this thing in the offseason about mm-hmm. where, you know where we we're going to allocate resources to. You know we invested in some some young offensive players through the draft capital, and then you know we really wanted to get depth up front, and then you know impact players, and that's the thing you know sometimes people don't understand the ebbs and flows of the trends in the league and where this game's headed right now and how important those safeties are and it's you know it's a little bit different than the Steve Atwaters and the Ronnie Lots and then you know the way people are playing really a lot of first second down in the league right now and a guy like Jesse and how smart he is it proved our point the other day you know so and that's a credit to a lot of things what we where we wanted to go defensively uh, the way that we want our DBs to challenge and then you got a guy back there uh, he's an impact player clearly I mean, when you you look at the stat line, you take a step back. I knew he had an awesome game, and then you go back, and they hit me today that it's the first time since 2000, I believe. I read yep. this. Some stats, you know, again, yeah, right. you can laugh at me because some stats are kind of <laughs> dismissed, but sometimes I get impressed <laughs> with NFL <laughs> records. So I'll get on my soapbox here. But when when somebody tells you you haven't done something since 2000, long time, long time, ten tackles, two interceptions, and got that forced fumble, and the way he got that forced fumble, mm-hmm. you talk about that little extra effort that still matters. Well, somebody else gave up on that play. Jesse's right there, different than him poking that ball out. And, right. and, uh, and we almost got a few more. Richie had one go through. His, you know, he made a hell of a play, uh, breaking on Hayden on one. Um, it was fun to see. And then really what was awesome was we're up 14. And you get in obvious pass situations, and they were hitting the quarterback. And there was no, you know, from a year ago where you're holding on. I, once Tyler popped that run in, I was as confident as I've been in a long time. Mm. Right. And uh, we knew they were going to have to try to go along our way. And eventually when they handed that ball off, it was basically saying, hey, we say the game's over. So that was awesome. Right. And that's a business model. Get up by a couple of scores. Your defense gets after a one-dimensional offense. And you can pin your ears back and do their thing. Speaking of while well, we got to hear about defense, uh, we lose uh, Troy Anderson with the concussion protocol. So Nate Landeman, next man up. How'd this all go down time-wise? He, he came well, to you no, guys no, and said he self-reported? Well, yeah. I mean, look, I'm not going to get into some of the, the medical details. I know some things are open, and that's why we have injury reports. But yeah, I mean, it was something that came up on Tuesday. And so, look, I mean, if we're going to be accused of anything, we're going to be overly cautious. Mm-hmm. You know, we got a long season ahead. Troy's got a long career. Again, he may clear, may not, but that's why you build depth. Right. And that's that's what it is. I mean, no different than last week. I thought Hughes had a good week, but just hey, one more week, just again on the game plan, what we thought it was, and you take a calculated risk. And, you know, obviously those guys made it right. You know, we thought the way the game was going to go, we didn't like – it was smart to have another week, and Brooks was up if we needed him, and that's the way it goes. And so they'll be the same thing this week. Coach Arthur Smith with us here live at Flowery Branches, Dukes and Bell Sports Radio, 92.9 The Game. Next opponent, Green Bay, guys. You can listen right here on The Game. Um, Bijan, obviously, going to the game, a lot, of, a lot of expectations. I think he touched it, Coach, 16 times, the number uh, 83 yards from the line of scrimmage, obviously the touchdown. Do you go in to these games – uh, and you have an idea of how many touches? Is it 16 to 20? It doesn't matter if it's Drake, if it's Bijan, or is it game flow? How does how does that come about? I know you game plan, but does yeah. that just play out as the game goes along, and then you look up and one guy's got 16 you know, or five or whatever it might be? You you have your plan, and then you have your contingency plans, and I think that's part of the strategy, too. It's like we want to be more balanced, and I know people are probably rolling their eyes with the way the game went, but like we, we do. So we <laughs> came out passing, and it didn't go well, and then the way the game went, we knew, like again, you make those decisions. Like we weren't going to get greedy when we knew we were up, and we and we called the shot when we had to. But that was a lot of the strategy. The way the game was going, felt we were we were controlling the lines of scrimmage, and just watching what the way it was flowing, and we were hitting explosives in the run game. And then, but we still needed them. I mean, you can't be three yards in a cloud of dust. So you got to pick it up. We made a Matt Collins made a great play, and then we launched one to Kyle. I mean, that was the difference, right? There's five minutes, some change. Uh, you know, you make them think that hey, we're getting conservative and push that ball down the field and uh and tyler punches it in and so you know that's the ebb and flow of that game and i think the 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 biggest challenge is always in the nfl is can we get better there's always things you got to work on objectively there's a lot we can get better at and that wouldn't matter if we won by 
28 or 14. Right. That's the name of the game for us. And, and looking at the Packers, and it'll be a fun atmosphere. Mercedes is Sunday. Now they won the opener. You know, it, the final score is different, but they did almost the same thing in terms of taking over, taking right. advantage of turnovers, field position. They played well. It is Arthur Smith with us, guys, live from Falcons headquarters on Dukes and Bell uh, because we've seen uh, what they can do. And Derek Brown's been a one-man gang much of his career in Carolina. Then Burns decides to show up, and then they were getting after him. Was it the slants and the way they were coming at the line that was taking away some of the things you wanted to do? And was that why maybe you kind of were a little conservative before halftime just because you couldn't protect Ritter until you made some adjustments? Well, I mean, well, I'll go back okay. just to the beginning, right, to the first ball. Unfortunately, it got tipped. Right. No, Tell does that. Now it's great that you caught your own ball for negative six, but let's pat that thing down. Um, you know, the third down, I mean, if you really go, go out, I mean, Kyle ran an awesome route on Chen. Chen actually fell down. Again, great playing. You, you got right to your first read, and I mean, it's wide open, and you go to throw it. And we just, he got around the edge quick. Uh, again, he just, we were sliding to him, and he made a play. Ball popped out. That was, a, you know, the first third down. And so it did, you know, and I'll give Burns credit. But again, as you adjust, and we made the adjustment to where we wanted to go, and again, we're getting in the two-minute drive, mm-hmm. you pick up a good first down. You got timeouts, and all of a sudden you take a negative play like that, no sacks, like Set you again, back. being in right. second and, and now you're behind schedule. Million, you're way behind schedule. You're under 20. And yes, I still had timeouts, but to sit there and try to, you know, launch it down the middle again and let them grease, you know, get greased up to go back. Mm-hmm. That's the decision you make, and you live with it. Coach, uh, as we look ahead to the Packers, give us your impressions on them. Obviously, you said that they won. Uh, Jordan Love, you know, that's been one of the storylines, obviously, this season, this offseason. Uh, what do you see in, in, in this Packer team? Yeah, I think, you know, they're, offensively, it's completely different. And, and I don't give Matt a lot of credit. I mean, sometimes it's like, you know, no, no whatever. You know, when you got Aaron Rodgers, you play a certain way. And, you know, they're, they're doing a good job. Jordan's been in that system. Matt's familiar with them. And you're seeing a lot of stuff in, in terms of first, second down. You're seeing them run the the boots, you know, keepers, whatever you want to call them. You know, they hit a throwback screen. Aaron Jones for a big play. They hit the, the old tight end hide screen. He actually fumbled the snap. He picked it up. And mm-hmm. he was wide open. Right. And, and got it too late. If you got it too long time, that was a touchdown. So th- they got some explosive that way in the in the play action. Um, and credit to them. I mean, they did a nice job executing. They stayed on track. They converted a couple of third downs. And then uh, they hit the, the big one that they hit was on that fourth and three. They ran a, a little choice route out of the backfield to, to Aaron, and he took it to the house. Aaron Jones, that is. And so they executed well. And then and they made Chicago turn the ball over. Chicago's in a long, long yard situations, pre-snap penalties. I mean, it's usually the way it goes. Yeah. It's week one, and they played smart, and they made the plays that when the, when the time was there. And uh, that's what you saw. And you saw a, a player that's comfortable. Again, Matt and him have been together. They got a good roster, and uh, it'll be a fun Sunday. Yeah, that's an attack that's got some of the elements we look at. You know, they got they got running backs that can catch the ball. They got young wide receivers. Obviously, if Watson Watson goes, that's a big time weapon. Akuda, by the way, think we'll see Akuda on Sunday. Well, he practiced today, so that's right. encouraging. And again, uh, we got to get him back and, and get him ramped up. And so that's encouraging. He practice. Um, obviously, the elephant in the room, right, Coach? And, and everybody's going. Uh, how do we get more explosive plays? And how do we get? more out of our wideouts. I, I don't even know what the game plan was. And, you know, it's something we've been talking about since Sunday with Drake's situation. But games go this way, right? And I will say this, too. And I, I said this before you came in here. We don't have any me guys on this team. This yeah. is why this works, mm-hmm. right? Drake's not in here complaining about what he didn't get. We won the football game. And I think that's the reason why this team is going to have success. But for our listeners, a lot of people are saying, hey, can we get more explosive plays with, with you know, Pitts had a big one. Can we get more with Drake? It's the first game, but how would you answer that? Well, every game is different. I mean, I think that was a rare NFL game. I mean, it, it reminded me a little bit of we beat Baltimore in the playoffs when I was in Tennessee, and I, I can't remember the top of my head, and Ryan barely picked the ball up. That I think he threw for like 100 yards and mm. won, I think it was 28-12 or something like that. I can't remember off the top of my head. It's a weird game. It was a weird game. Yeah, it was. And then you come out in the AFC Championship game, and you know we're throwing it around and moving the ball. Unfortunately, we lost it, but that's usually not how an NFL game goes. You know, the problem was we didn't have a lot of penalties. We did a lot of things to ourselves. I mean, give de- Carolina's a good defense. Give them mm-hmm. credit, and I'm not taking anything away from them. But we can't have some self-inflicted wounds. Some of it's post-snap, and we all got to do a better job. It's going to start with me. But when you get in a long, long yardage situations, the flow of the game, that'll probably I, I'd be the next couple of years, I doubt any game will ever go like that. You know, just because of the, the circumstances. 
We came out. We want to be balanced. I would be concerned if we hadn't, if there wasn't evidence of this. I, you know, I read something that was like, you know, confidence is just about belief. It's about having evidence, whether you trained or whatever. But nobody's worried about Drake London. I mean, go look at a lot of the film last season. Again, everybody wants to live in the prisoner of the moment. Mm-hmm. The ultimate goal is to win. And when you have the right guys and they understand that and there's trust built back and forth, they know that we're not just sitting here as a uh, hollow politician blowing smoke, <laughs> you know, trying to give you a coach speak. They know what goes on behind the scenes. And so when you have guys like that, it gives you a chance to win week in and week out while we ultimately want to build this thing and win championships here. And I doubt there'll be a game like that. It just, it's just a statistical anomaly. We got to be better. You don't want to punt seven times. You know, we got a couple of short fields. And at the end of the day, there's perspective. We'll turn the ball over. You play off the turnovers, 17 points off turnovers, three for three, putting touchdowns in the red zone. You know, win a lot of games. But will it always go like that in terms of Jesse getting two picks and a fumble? No, you wish it would. And you wish you, you score, you know, 60 points a game. Right. You know, with it, it's just it's a statistical anomaly. But if Drake hadn't done it before mm-hmm. or Kyle hadn't done it, it was actually kind of cathartic. To see Kyle go make a play down the field again. Yeah, I mean, yeah. People don't understand the challenges behind the scenes sometimes, mm-hmm. not just physically, mentally. You know, there were a lot of things we missed last year with Kyle deep. Go back to 21 when he was in rhythm. I mean, you're talking about winning games out of Miami, New mm-hmm. Orleans, kind of, you know, right. in London, kind of finishing that game off before Mike Davis punched it in when we took the shot to Kyle down the middle. Like, he was in a good rhythm. There's a reason he broke the record. And then even Des, you know, late last year, we got a lot of confidence. And we got to go do it, but there's been evidence. So I know it was long-winded, but if you wanted that, that's my, a yeah, truthful right. answer. Yeah. Right. You have evidence. And statistically, that's probably never how a game's going to go again for us. Mm-hmm. But, you know, you, you want to be balanced. We've got explosive players, and we got a bunch of selfless guys. Falcons head coach Arthur Smith with us, guys. Carly asked you about the rhythm of play calling. Algier, obviously, it looked like he could go for 10 yards on every carry. Then, as I was telling the guys behind me in the stands, I go, yeah, they want to go downfield, but the pocket wasn't really there. When he, when he had time to throw, how did you evaluate the decision-making, what Desmond was doing, and hitting his targets? Yeah, again, you know, I mean, I guess you can shake the numbers and look efficient, efficient, but there are some other things behind the scenes that we got to continue to work. But you know, a lot of belief in Desmond, and again, it takes all eleven uh, to make plays successful. Right. You know, every once in a while, you know, maybe I get a hit, maybe a one-on-one go ball, sure. But a lot of times, you talk about spacing, the pocket, you know, the action again, what the, what they're doing, you know, seeing they were trying to take away, which they were playing lighter, which mm-hmm. let us a lot, get a lot of explosive runs. I know, I know, you know, everybody, you want balance. That's what we want. But we had some big runs. I mean, every time Bijan got through that second level, it was kind of hold your breath a little bit. Mm-hmm. And it was really because our guys were finishing and some of the things we set up. And then I thought Tyler uh, played an excellent game. I, I was going to ask you, Coach, about the balance. We were talking about this uh, Monday after the game. And as a coach, that feel, you are the play caller. Tyler's hot. I'm going to keep the, I'm going to keep it there. Bijan's hot. I'm, I'm going to keep it there. That balance of, you know, how, how you waver between back and forth between these guys when they're both balling out, when they're both playing sure. really well. And I think it's that's a hard thing to do, is it not? Especially if you don't – those guys have great chemistry. They're different runners. They're both very explosive runners. Mm-hmm. They're both yak guys. They're different how they do it. Uh, so it's a good it's a good uh, mix and match, yin, yin, however you want to look at it. Um, and there's plenty of stuff on the, on the call sheet for both of them. And there's things, you know, obviously you set up for one player or other, but they, you know, God bearing it. You know, somebody has to get their chin strap fixed and you need the best play and they can both, you know, one of them, you have faith in both of them. Um, but it just it goes to show you, man, that emotion is real. You know, you watch them score. Well, the always thing this is fascinating when somebody scores. Who you knows? want to see the spirit of a team. Who knows? Mm-hmm. You want to see the esprit de corps, however you want to look at it. Go watch those guys start, score touchdowns. Like, they'll tell you a lot. Like, just that's just, just, just stuff you can't fake. Yeah, you're right. Because everybody was celebrating. Everybody was happy. Listen. We're building a, a a real home field advantage. Packers in town on Sunday. We expect everybody to come back out and be out. And if you haven't gone, come to the game yet. Come. It's going to be exciting. Uh, and, Coach, we're looking to go 2-0. and right. Congratulations on the 1-0, but now we're building, baby. Yeah. I, I do want to say something. I, I thought that was the loudest I've heard the building. That's what you, you don't think yeah. it, it makes a difference, there was a third and five. They jumped off sides. Yep. We call a different pressure. You know, we, we, we collapse that pocket. And, and Troy on a second effort gets up and, and gets a sack, you know, like that building was rocking. And that was part of it. You could, you could feel it and you can look in their eyes too. I mean, you want to know why I didn't feel like we had to pick the ball up? Cause they looked like they were, they were done and the crowd had something to do with it. That's great. Awesome. Well, let's, let's build on that Atlanta coach. Appreciate you. Uh, right we'll on. talk here to you next week. We'll be here again. 
Green Bay on uh, Sunday, guys, right here on Sports Radio 92.9 The Game. Thanks, Art. I appreciate it. As Thanks, Coach guys. says, we do not apologize for a win. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on. <laughs> it's Dukes and Bell. We got a lot more to get to, guys. You heard Coach talk about the win. Also, what he expects from Green Bay. We're going to chop it up with Kate Nellis on the way here. He will stop by the show as well.